Look, I don't want to cause like pandemonium and panic in the streets, but you can now do image to music. People have been messing around with this. People have been creating these really cool tracks. It's, it's crazy. You just take an image, a PNG or something, upload it, and it'll give you like a, like a fat beat to go with it. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this video is firstly, we're gonna go through how to use this new algorithm. And then afterwards, we're gonna talk about how it works under the hood and the difference between like marketing <laughs> and reality, <laughs> which is like <laughs> a very important difference in the AI space, in my, in my humble opinion. Okay, great. So this is one I just generated. I uploaded this amazing picture of the pancake cat. How does it sound? What does this cat, what does this pancake cat sound like? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of chill. It's kind of like chill, you know? Pancake cat. It's just, it's just vibing. Wonder what would happen if we just like regenerated the music? What if we just passed the same image again and generated it again? I wonder what kind of outcome we'd get. You know, would it be like the same outcome? Would it be a little bit different this time? Is there like a, some randomness in there or? I wonder what the difference is going to be this time. Nice. That was really quick, really easy. Already we have two sick tracks from Quot Iblini. Let's listen to the second one. Okay. This is a bit different. Not bad. But different. <laughs> Which is a bit odd, right? This is like, alarm bells should be ringing really loudly right now. I'm going to download that one and we're going to generate again. Because what? Same image, two very different songs. Whatever process is happening here, it doesn't look like it's deterministic. But for fairness, you know, let's just do it a third time and see what results we get. And so, and while we're waiting for that third, you know, fat track to drop, let's talk about the process behind all of this, what's going on in the background. So I got here from a tweet by this gentleman. So what this person's done is they've kind of stuck two things together. On the one hand, they've used this clip interrogator, which it's this algorithm which is like good and it takes in an image and it spits out like a sentence that should describe that image. And he's also using this king called Moobert. And what that does is that is a company and they have this algorithm, Moobert, which, you know, funnily enough, takes in a sentence and spits out some fat tracks. You know, it's just some, some nice, lovely audio waveform there. Okay, and so that's, that's what's going on. You, you, you give it the cat, goes through these guys, and you, you get your nice audio at the end of it. And so this is what we would call an image to audio algorithm. That's an accurate description of this process. But the really big question that is important to ask whenever you hear about one of these algorithms is, is it any good? You can imagine a really bad algorithm. Let's imagine the worst possible image to audio algorithm. Let's call it like FooBird. Let's say this FooBird process, what it does, it chooses a random pixel from the image, completely at random, completely from a random color channel. And let's say the pixel's value is like, you know, 34, perfectly normal pixel value. It goes, okay, and uses this 34 as a random seed for generating a static noise WAV file. So just like it generates a random audio file and it just uses this number as a seed for generating that audio file. Okay, and okay, great. So now you have your random audio, which is gonna sound like, like static or something. Now, this is an example of an image to audio algorithm. It's just very bad because the relation between the image and the audio is not much. It's like barely anything. There's almost no relation whatsoever. And if you ran it multiple times, you'd get different pixels every time and, and you know, the outcomes would be incomparable. The point I'm trying to make here is that an algorithm can be like text to image or image to text or text to audio or image to audio or whatever, but it can also at the same time be garbage, absolute bollocks. So the question that we want to ask ourselves is this process here that, is, that has been used over here for a pancake cat, is it, is it garbage or is it like good? Is it reasonable? And for it to be reasonable, what you'd expect is that you'd put in the image and you get out some audio and you'd be able to see some really good coherence between the input and the output in some way. That's what you'd want for those two to sort of cohere to each other in some satisfying way. Otherwise, it's like a bad one. Okay, so Fubert was like a bad image to audio algorithm. Uh, let's just go through the inner workings of, of this one here and see if it's any good. 
Okay, so we start off with something called Clip Interrogator. So Clip Interrogator is a project managed by this pharma psychotic guy, and it's also been hosted on a hugging face, and basically it lets you take an image and it'll generate a like a description of the image. Under the hood, Clip Interrogator relies on this thing called Blip. And Blip was the outcome of a research paper. Basically, it's like a really flexible collection of models that can do a lot of language image related tasks really well. One of the things they do pretty well is taking images and taking out a sentence that describe the image. So inside Clip Interrogator is using that. If you actually look at the code uh, behind Clip Interrogator, you see that as well as using Blip, it also has a bunch of terms that it thinks are likely to come up, like different kinds of um, art styles and different kinds of websites. And it basically generates a whole bunch of different possible plausible sentences which could describe your image well, and it chooses the best one from those. So while Blip might be like, oh yeah, this is nails on a chalkboard, Clip Interrogator also adds a bunch of stuff. It like tries a bunch of similar sentences, passes them back to Blip, and the one that Blip likes the best is the one you end up uh, getting out of Clip Interrogator. So what did we get? A cat sitting on a chair next to a stack of pancakes. See, Shutterstock contest winner, furry cat, smug expression. So I actually, it managed to get smug facial expression. That's crazy. That is insane to me that the that this algorithm can tell that this cat is being smug. That's mind boggling. But anyhow, the point is blip by itself probably wouldn't have made this sentence because this is like a pretty strange sentence. It's because of the extra terms that clip interrogator sort of forces to be added in there. Okay, so that's the first stage of our image to audio algorithm. And so far, I don't know about you, but I think this is looking pretty good at the moment because you can already see that you've got an image and you've got a pretty good description of, of the image. Now you've lost a lot of the information that was originally there, but you do get a pretty general idea of what this image is. In fact, if you show me this text, I would know which image it was referring to and I could find that image. Okay, so what's next? So now we start straying into Mubit territory. We've got our text and then Mubit somehow gives us audio from that text. How does Mubit do this? Well, if you go to Mubit's website, it's a, quite coy about what it does exactly. If you read it, there's actually like a fairly, a lot of nice copy and a lot of nice images, but it's actually kind of hard to find anything substantive. Artificial intelligence, music producers, symbiotic relationship, millions of samples from hundreds of artists free into Moobird and the AI takes it from there. So like, I used to run a company like this and I used to have to write copy like this. And I, this is, I smell a rat at this stage. It's probably, you know, they're probably a fine company and they probably provide a very, a very um, good service. But the fact that they're not really willing to tell you how their system works and what AI they're using and what role it actually plays. They just use the word AI a lot. Now we, now we know that we have to do a little bit of digging ourselves to work out what's actually going on here. According to the author, he's using the Mubit API at this stage. And Mubit does already have a text to music functionality. So we can pretty much assume that that's exactly what is being used here. So what Mubit relies on is this thing called Sentence Transformer, which is a Python library wrapped around this thing called SBIRT, which I don't know if, you, if you've been in the machine learning space for a while, you'll remember there was something called BERT, which was really good in that you could give it a, a word and it would spit out an embedding for that word. Get to embeddings in a second. Um, and then the SBIRT paper just made a variation to that where instead of a single word, you can give it a whole sentence and it'll create an embedding for that sentence, which kind of represents the meaning of that sentence. So that was a really good paper. Um, and what an embedding is, just imagine it like um, like two numbers. That's That would be an example of an embedding, is two numbers. So you give it this sentence, that was on the chalk bug board by Greg Rutowski, and it would give you two numbers. And if you give it a different sentence, it'll give you different two numbers, blah, blah, blah. And the thing is that depending on what those two numbers are, you can actually graph those onto a graph. So in this case, there's a very low X and a very high Y. So the X is 0.32, so it's very close to zero. The Y is 8.7, 8.17, so it's, it's, it's a lot higher. And for whatever sentence you give it, SBIRT will give you one of these uh, embeddings, and the embedding will, you can represent the embedding somewhere in 2D space. And basically the idea is that you can use this to work out how similar two sentences are. 
if Esper is doing its job right, then if we change this slightly like nails in a chalkboard, the embedding that we'd get out of that would be really similar and therefore it would plot it like really similar on the graph. And you could tell that by looking at these two vectors that the original sentences are quite similar. That's how SBERT works, uh, except these embeddings are like 384 numbers instead of just two. And so instead of two dimensional space, you could sort of think of them existing in like 384 dimensional space. Um, but don't worry too much about that. The point is it gives you some numbers that give you a rough idea of, of what is in the sentence. Okay, so how do they actually use SBERT exactly? Well, I went ahead, I read all this code, and I'm assuming this is the same code that's used in the um, FFF Leone app. Is they take your prompt and they compare it to a bunch of pre-existing tags, right? Tribal, action, ethno, reggae, jazz, blah, blah, blah. And what they do is they just find out which tags are most similar to your prompt using SBERT again. So they, they create an embedding for your, your prompt, then they create an embedding out of each tag, tribal, jazz, liquid funk, also using SBERT, right? They pass in the tag and it comes out as an embedding, and then they just find the embeddings that are closest to each other in the embedding space. Again, these embeddings are, I'm representing them in 2D space, but imagine they're in 348D space. So now they've got the tags that they think are most uh, the best, and then they, they pass those tags to their API. And the API does some magic, and from those tags it creates an mp3 file. So let's just do a quick recap, right? We've gone from an image, which is quite rich, to a description of that image in text, which is also quite rich. And from the text we've gone to like three or four tags from a, from a list of 130 tags. That's where we're sitting right now. In my opinion this is kind of a problem, right? Because even though an image, you know, even though text can give you like a reasonable description of an image, these tags do not. Even if Mubert has this sick AI that does all this crazy nonsense to generate an MP3 file from these tags, because the tags have almost no relation to the original image, we're already screwed. This is already not a good process because we've lost the original data at this stage and we're just working with tags. Okay, but there's still an interesting question, which is like, how does Mubert actually work? It takes in tags, it gives you back music. How does it work? You could certainly imagine one way for it working, which is simply that it has a whole bunch of songs and if you give it five tags, it'll find a song that has all those tags and it'll send it back to you. And maybe there are a thousand songs and, and, and maybe that's all it is. Maybe it's just a library. They don't explicitly state what they are. Uh, it's not likely it's a library. This guy here in 2019 spent a whole blog post trying to work out how Mubit actually works. Um, I thought this was kind of a nice representation. Basically what it seems to be is that humans will generate a whole bunch of different tracks, which might just be like a, like a drum beat or like a synth up and downy bit or like a bit of vocals or something. And Mubit will select random um, samples and stick them together and make them into a track and then send you the track. That's kind of what this guy is, is proposing. This actually tracks with their marketing copy as well. So here, more than 1 million samples from 4,000 musicians. So basically, it sounds like Mubert is just like a library of samples, more than 1 million. And whenever you ask them for a bunch of tags, like you want a happy song, it'll create you a song from the happy samples. And I guess they've got some fancy algorithm to stick them together in a nice way. Back to our Excalibur. Um, so started with the image, got a sentence out of the image, got some tags out of the sentence in a, in a way that's pretty arbitrary in my opinion. Sent those tags to Mubit. Mubit looks in its library. It's like, okay, it looks under the jazz section, looks under the tribal section. It feeds those to an algorithm, stitches them together. And this is sort of, this is the AI that Mubit keeps talking about, the AI, which my suspicion is that mostly it's just if statements. Maybe there's like a little bit of machine learning in there. Anyhow, stitches those together gives you a track, and then finally we get this mp3 file at the end. Which, let's have a look, shall we? Are you ready? <laughs> this is Kot Iblini number three. Like this one's quite nice. <laughs> I kind of get behind it. But what you will notice is that it sounds nothing like the other tracks at all. <laughs> 
<laughs> which again is exactly what we would have expected now that we know the whole process that happens here. Just to do a final recap, we started off with this image, which is, you know, that's great data. Images are really nice, rich data. You know, this image tells a lot of stories. We love this image. We get from that this really nice textual description, which is fairly rich, which loses, you know, a lot of the, the richness of the image, but it still gives you something. You know, cat sitting in the chair next to a stack of pancakes. That's, that's pretty good already. You know, furry art. Uh, cook, you know, because it's got like cooking here, begging for alms, <laughs> smug facial expression, you know, so it actually, it's pretty rich still. This, this sentence clearly corresponds to this image. You go from that to three tags picked out of 130 music genres, right? This is bad. This is terrible. This is, this is really, really garbage, <laughs> in my opinion. Almost nothing of this corresponds to this image there's there's no correspondence even if the conversion process is really faithful you're not going to get much correlation between these two at all and then from this again you can have whatever kind of crazy impressive process you'd like to go from three tags to a sound wave we've looked into it probably the process isn't even that cool but you know i guess it's kind of it's kind of interesting the results actually sound kind of nice so that's that's fine we'll give that a small tick that's the process. So, in conclusion, this is silly, and you shouldn't expect good results from this at all. Um, but, you know, credit where credit's due, this was a great marketing idea. I, there are people, a lot of people have been posting these around. Um, so, even if the Moober technical team isn't amazing, maybe they are amazing, I don't know. Technical team aside, the Moober marketing team who knew to call themselves things like Moobit AI, regardless of how, how much AI is in their process, and knew to build things like this text to music pipeline, which makes almost no sense. Um, they knew that this would give them traction regardless, and it would give them people posting on Twitter and generating all this, all this hype for them, even people like me. So um, whoever's doing marketing at Moobit, you know, that's, that's the real AI. <laughs> okay, that's it. Beware of the hype, beware of the hype. Um, if you have any questions or anything, you know, YouTube comment, Discord comment. Uh, if you wanna see some examples of some people in the community who've been generating some fun songs, you can check out them in the Discord as well. And beware the hype, okay? Next time you, next time you hear the word AI, just like, just be wary. <laughs>